Welcome to the worshiping community of Old St. Paul's Baltimore. Let us pray. Brooding spirit, beneath your wings there is creation and life. Accompany us on the difficult path with the disappeared and the broken, the fearful and the vengeful, until we find the way to the city of our peace, where we are accepted as we are, through the cross of Jesus Christ, our only Lord. Amen. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day, observe it in honor of the Lord. Also those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God, while those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yes, the Pharaoh, Pharaoh, oh, oh, and my people know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, the burning bush told me just the other day that I should come over here and stay. Gotta get my people out of Pharaoh's land. Lead them all to the promised land. I said, Pharaoh, Pharaoh, oh, oh, and my people Yeah, 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 well, me and God's people come 
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When we mess up, people are keeping track. Mary and I had a late payment to her credit card three years ago, and it's still impacting our credit score. When you were in school, they were keeping track of how many demerits you have. Oh, they're keeping track of how many parking tickets you have. When we mess up, people are keeping track. And here comes Jesus, out of step, once again. Peter comes to Jesus and asks him, Jesus, how many times do I have to forgive someone? As many as seven times? Now, seven times seems like a lot. You've heard that saying, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. That's twice. Seven times? Jesus says, I want you to forgive not seven times, but 77 times. And actually, another way to translate that number, and some Bibles do that, is that Jesus said, don't forgive seven times. Forgive seven times 70. Which if I do my math, that's 490. Well, how are we going to keep track of that? We're going to need some sort of app, you know, some, uh, you know, a running total in a notebook so that, you know, when, when somebody's at 76 or maybe even at 469, we, we say, okay, you know, just one more. That'd be silly. The number is set so high that we would lose track. Jesus is saying something about the continuous need continuous need to forgive. Now, we might be feeling some resistance to this kind of overflowing way that we are supposed to forgive. What, we're just supposed to have people with no consequences, let people run over us, we're just going to forgive and forgive? So I guess it really matters some what you mean by forgiveness. So let me tell a story. When I was in college, I owned a Cutlass Supreme. It was this beautiful yellow car with this great grill in front, and, and I adored this car, and I bought it with my own money. And I didn't loan it out to people. Well, I had one of my four roommates at the time, a man named Bill, who really wanted to borrow it. He had a big date coming up. And so he nagged me and pressured me and guilted me, and I finally gave in. And in this sort of squeamish way, I handed him over the keys to my beloved car. Well, that night, Bill wrecked my car. Thank goodness no one was hurt, but the car was totaled. It was ruined. And uh, he had to admit that he had too much to drink and that's what caused him to run into this tree and wreck my car. Well, I was furious and I was hurt. And you know, that really doesn't have anything to do with forgiveness. Actually, you want to have authentic feelings when someone does something wrong to you. That is completely appropriate and good to know and have those feelings acknowledged, being upset and hurt. Well, I wanted Bill to pay for the damage that he had done. And that also seems to be appropriate. Forgiving doesn't mean necessarily that there are no consequences for actions, and he did end up paying to fix the car. And I'll tell you that if Bill had come to me and later said, Hey, can I borrow your car, another car I had? Can I borrow that car again? 
I would have probably said no. Some of what can happen is that we are aware of how people behave. To forgive doesn't necessarily mean that we completely forget and have no boundaries anymore. But I still needed to forgive. There's something that has to happen inside of me in relation to Bill that I wasn't going to hold this against him anymore. I wasn't going to bring it up all the time. I wasn't going to make him feel guilty. I wasn't going to hold a grudge. I wasn't going to let that block my relationship with him. The forgiveness had to do with me letting go. Now, when we talk about that kind of forgiveness and letting go, No one is saying that that is easy. We really don't want to put aside the profound hurts and betrayals and things that come at us. Those are real, and it is difficult many times to forgive. But those great spiritual leaders, people like Desmond Tutu and the Dalai Lama, tell us how much our world needs forgiveness Forgiveness between individuals, forgiveness between groups, that is so needed for our world to work today. And more than that, they would say, when people forgive, they are finding freedom. There's this way that we can carry around a burden of an unforgiving spirit. That hurt, that spite, that desire to get back, that's not good for our hearts to carry around. There is real freedom in forgiving. And one of the ways that we can find help in finding that forgiving spirit that we all want to have is by coming in touch with the way that God forgives us. Now, God does care what we do and how we behave. God doesn't want us to be selfish or hurt people. What we do matters. But what the gospel says is that God forgives us. God doesn't want those things to get in way of our relationship with God. God wants to wipe that slate clean so that we know we are forgiven people, no matter what we have done. There's this image you sometimes see about when each of us, after death, we go to the pearly gates. I've seen it in cartoons and such. And and there typically is St. Peter behind a podium with a big book with all the bad things we've done, keeping track of all the ways that we have misbehaved. That image is what the world says, or maybe even sometimes the church says, But it's not the gospel. The gospel says that Jesus Christ wipes away all those wrongs. They are no longer there. Can we take that in? Can you and I believe and trust that God loves us so much no matter what we've done, how we misbehave, God forgives those sins. Jesus takes away the sins of the world and gives us a clean slate. Whether it's 77 times or 490 times, endless times, God forgives and forgives us. And then Jesus says, go and do likewise. Please join me in praying to God for the church that we may have strength to carry out Christ's mission of love for racial justice, equity, and reconciliation in our country, for the healing of divisions among us, for the poor, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison, for those who are living with anxiety, depression, and addiction, for all who are suffering during this COVID-19 pandemic, and especially for those who have lost their jobs, for those who are ill, and for the medical workers caring for them, for those who seek God or a deeper knowledge of God, We give thanks to God for the many blessings in our lives. We ask these prayers in the name of Jesus and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May, May the, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Dear Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to possess you within my soul. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you, together with all your faithful people, gathered around every altar of your church, and I embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Crown him with many crowns, the Lamb upon his throne. Hark how the heavenly anthem drowns all music but its own. Awake, my soul, and sing of him who died for thee. And hear him as thy matchless king through all eternity. Crown him the Lord of Let us pray. Christ, our host, we thank you for this worship where sinners are welcomed and discover your grace. May our hearts learn to yield to your longing for us and our lives be shaped by the sanctifying spirit. Amen. May we remain open to wonder and mystery, to what is strange and new and precious in each child of God that with all the saints we might walk in the light of hope and the blessing of God Almighty, Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer, be upon you this day and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.